All right. Well, we have a quorum here. Why don't we get started and, and, and Val will just join in. We'll just start um, some um, just going over just getting, I guess, just some basics. So we'll just call the meeting to order. It's the finance committee meeting tonight. Um, and uh, we will be uh, reviewing um, our recommendations of the budget. <laughs> oh, here comes Val. Val. Good timing. She is. And then we will uh, present that to the select board tomorrow at their select board meeting. So um, Linda had given us all the items to go over earlier today, which was great. Um, I did not match them all against each item that we had in the past. <coughs> They're all the same, I'm guessing. Like what, Linda, like what? Uh, just the today. ones that I, I think, I think only the ones that I pointed out in that just, were, okay. were changed. Um, okay. Because I think what we were going to do is we're going to take that union, like come up with a number and park it somewhere, but we had the information. So we went ahead and put it into the various budgets. Oh, okay. um, yeah, there, there were, there were a few things. I'll, I'll be happy to continue to point them out. But I think other than that, um, that everything else should be the same as the worksheets that you reviewed that night. Okay. So would you like me to bring your worksheet up on the screen? Uh, sure. Well, the first thing I wanted to go over just quickly, I just wanted to let everyone know what I, who, who wasn't there at the meeting. And I don't think too many of us were at the select board meeting. The last select board meeting I attended and they've been asking me for updates as we go. And I needed to, I wanted to know where the select board stood. I had heard bits and pieces from various select board members and I needed to kind of have some direction because I didn't want to waste our time and spend some time, you know, reviewing this over and over and over again for it to not be considered. So in that, um, I did want to let you know there are um, a few select board members that are very strongly about um, it, it, Paul had brought up a while ago, um, let's talk about it in dollars. Um, what is it going to cost the taxpayer? And so Dan had provided us a chart. The chart was very helpful. And in that chart, it showed and he, it showed from where, we, where nothing is, where we started in 2021, all the way to the uh, levy increase, the full amount that is what it, we're looking at here to do some level of services. Um, and that's what we're able to do. There are several select board members who are stating that they are just not going to support the complete full amount of that. Um, in, in where my thoughts were, this is my personal thoughts, I'm not in support of, of keeping it at level, uh, the uh, level funded either because there's a lot of things we need to consider and one is the salaries are in, in the employees. So with that being said, in here, my thinking was, is, you know, some type of a compromise and, and we can go over that a little bit more. And I also wanted just to point out too, and, and this is just my thinking, we talk awful lot about rate and everybody's saying, oh, the, the, the rate is 12, the rate is, is low and it's the lowest around. And, and that, that is true. Um, and I agree with that, but in my field, I spent just, uh, like, um, I spend a lot of time with dollars. The rate doesn't really mean a ton to me. It's about the dollars to me. That's how I see it. Just kind of like Linda wasn't into the percentage. I'm, I, I'm not into, I'm about the dollars. So for me, I'm looking at how much is it going to be in dollars? So I think that our, our, when I look at the dollar increase, it is substantial even at 12 because our values are so high. The values of our homes are very, very high. And I, I kind of wanted to see where we were. And so when I checked, it looks like, in, in, um, according to the Massachusetts Associate for, of Realtors, they say the average single family home in 2019 was 230,000. Franklin County was 226. And Ham, Hamden, Hampshire County, sorry, was 291,000. According to us, we're saying our average family home is 350,000. I mean, I know it's higher, 
we are definitely, our values in town are much, much higher than a, than a lot of our neighbors. Um, and I value that. I mean, I, I value the town. I think it's a great place and it's worth, worth it. But anyways, with that assessed value being so high, even with such a low rate, our people are paying a lot in dollars. So I just wanted to talk about the dollars. So it does make a difference. And with 60%, the Council on Aging always tells us 60% of our um, taxpayer, a lot of our people are elderly. We keep hearing it over and over again that we have a lot of elderly people in Hadley. And I, I believe that. And so some of those people are on fixed incomes. I know like my mother-in-law's house was probably around 20,000 when she bought it way back when, and it's probably in the high 300s right now. I mean, that's the, how the values of houses went. So anyways, I just wanted to put that in there that we're gonna be looking at this chart, keep that in mind, um, keep in mind what the, what, the, um, what, what the select board is also looking at too, because we don't wanna waste our time either. So let's try to work on something to make everybody happy is what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. So um, if anybody wanted to add, anything, or if you want to just pull charts up, that would be fabulous too. Um, Can I say something? Absolutely. I don't see that we should really factor in in advance what the select board thinks, because it's our job. We talk to the people. We, talk, we were kind of delegated the mission of gathering the information and uh, making a decision based on our opinion. They haven't done that. So I think we should just form our own opinion and deliver it. Okay. Anybody yeah. else? I support that. Okay. Okay. So um, do we want to just jump in and, and start yeah. these looking at these numbers? Let's go. All righty. Uh, Linda, will you, would you mind being the person to do all the sharing? <laughs> I will. Um, I will. And rather than share the PDF form, I am going to share my Excel version so I can actually put your numbers in. Okay. okay. So maybe we'll be all done at the end of your meeting with your, <laughs> with your form. So let's see. All right. Is that showing? Yes. Yep. Okay. So the top is just a summary of what we have, what, what we're working with, uh, the right. raise and appropriate, the transfers and the various funds and show how we would balance that. And it does still, again, I'm not, not making tweaks along the way. I think it's important to have your, uh, your, your baselines here and there. So this is beginning with the uh, revenues that uh, using the taxes as it was represented the first time we presented the revenues. It also though does include other changes in revenues uh, that, we, that we know about such as the uh, next cherry sheet came out and we got a small bump from that. So I put that in. Um, uh, that's why I, I also gave you that re the revenue review sheet too. So you can see. So we had a, a slight bump in the cherry sheet section and then we um, use, as I mentioned in my email, we added to the inspectors uh, line for fees since we're going to be collecting the electrical inspectors fees into the budget this year. So that went up by 40. And I think the um, cherry sheet was, wasn't up by much, about six, 6,000, between six and 7,000, I think. So to that extent, the revenue has been adjusted. But other than that, um, we, have not, uh, we have not revisited the revenues. We were very pleased with March, and I think I sent you all the report um, that we everything seemed to get pulled back into line with the with the third quarterly revenues. Um, they weren't looking that great at the end of February. We knew what some of the issues were, and uh, it snapped right back into place um, end of March. So that's we're feeling pretty good that we do think we have a good a good handle on. Uh, on the projections as long as it's um, not too far out, I guess. So that's what we were using. Now I haven't filled in your section of it because that's part of what you're discussing. How much, how much I put in for what funding depends on the budget that you vote on. And then also how you've, you know, if you've 
feel like you want to make changes in other areas. Um, if you brought taxes down, for example, and kept the same budget, then you'd probably be bringing up stabilization or free cash. So anyways, that's something that I have let, left for you to determine after you settle on the budget. And, um, and, and there are some other things. If I could just comment briefly, Jane, Amy, on what you said about the taxes, I, the, the, um, we, have other, we have other factors out there. Part of why our budget went down wasn't just because the taxes uh, were held even, which they were a special town meeting that the select or decided not to raise taxes last year at all. Um, which meant the town saved, townspeople saved quite a bit then. But it was also because we were down in other revenues. And part of the, the ARPA funding is revenue replacement. So we have other ways of making up the budget that you decide on. We don't have our, you know, we don't have every piece of it right now, but we have, um, there are, we have some ideas and we'd be able to hopefully develop that as you need it. So here is the worksheet I sent. Now, it's not just a worksheet, it also ends up being what gets printed and, and handed out at town meeting. And um, the difference between this and the worksheets that you worked on for the individual budgets is that all of the expenses, I'll just go to select board. We've got two categories, uh, salaries and expenses. They get separated out. You don't need to do the math tonight if you, because I'm not asking you to add up the first five lines and all the rest of it. What I will do with you tonight, for moderator, for example, if you decide to let him have his hundred dollars, I'm just gonna put it in the final line. And then I would go back myself later and um, break up that hundred dollars into the salary and expense parts. So you have the worksheets for the entire budget. If you have a bottom line on them, which is, which is, even though you and your mind, you, you might be thinking this particular line, I thought that was a little high, so I, I think we should cut that. On this final form, um, you would cut that from this expense amount or add or whatever you're doing. It would be to the total because the town votes on total expenses, not particular line items. So um, just to remind you of that, if you wanted to cut $1,000 out of a line item in a budget, you would really just be cutting it out of the bottom line. And, and that's what we'll be working on here. Okay. Okay. So um, do we have to, can we just discuss or, and we can just put it, do we have to do a vote on it? We don't have to vote on every single thing. I, I, unless it's up, unless I think there is some type of uh, debate or discussion. I think if it's just basic, right? We're just filling it in. Right. Well, yeah. do you all have your, I mean, do you want me to jump to each budget? No, I mean, right now, some of these are easy to put, to do. Yeah. I, say, let's I love that moderator all starts. In, unless anyone wants to discuss that. Some of these are pretty basic. I don't have anything to discuss about the moderator. If you want to put that one in. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. I'm <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can support that also. Okay. So, yeah, if anybody has anything to say, please jump in anytime. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the only clarification I'd like is that the, that the blue column that we're dealing with here, uh, Linda, you said some of the numbers changed since we looked at the other sheets? Yes, and I know which ones they are, and I'd be, okay. I'll, I'd bring them, I'll bring them so to can your we, attention. Can we just start with, you know, we'll go to select board. Amy, if you're good, go to select board if there's a change. If there's no change, then unless we have a comment from the last meeting, you know, from when we did those budgets, we would just say, okay, move it over, right? Accept yeah. it as it is. Okay. Yeah. Then, then we can plow through a lot of this. And then I yeah. know there are a few areas that people want to discuss. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. There's, there's no changes until we get to uh, the 190. So all the, okay. the, yeah. Okay. Which is, yeah, the whole first section here is no changes. Okay, so the ones that, um, and I can just tell you, Linda, which ones that are I'm interested in discussing um, about possible, you know, met changes would be um, uh, library, park and rec, 
Council on Aging, Veterans, Police and Fire, HR, DPW, OPEB, and uh, our reserve at the end, the FinCom reserve. Those are the ones I'd like to have some discussion on that stepped out in my mind. How do you want to proceed then? Do you want oh, to go to oh, those? Well, select board. Why don't we just go down to we, we go down the line and just start clicking away at this? Okay. So select board. Yep. Any so, issues there? Uh, no, no issues with the select board. I don't, I, I would say um, when, when discussion came about and then we talked about um, increase at first, when I saw increasing town hall hours, I wasn't in favor, but you know, to, to increase, expenses but when i found out it was only really to pay our people for what they're actually working i was all for that so yeah. as far as the increase um, my understanding is the really the three increases are going to be to um besides for the cola and, and and please point it out if i'm wrong on this would be the assessor would be dan needs to move up to 37 and a half and uh, the collector, Sue, needs to move up to 37 and a half. Everybody else is just COLA. And the budget. clerk. And the clerk. Oh, the clerk said, oh, okay. She wasn't, I didn't realize she was at um, 35. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so does this column, does the blue section already reflect that, Linda? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So then we're good. But other than that, that was the, those were the three, everybody else was um, COLA, if I, if I understand it right. Except for Linda, you had a stipend, but other than that, we're pretty much COLA. Right. And that, that was that, that was the basic of everything. So I would be saying yes to, yes to moderator, yes to select board. There's nothing in town administrator. Yes, the finance committee. Uh, I say uh, let's save the reserve fund to the to the end to see, you know, we could. I like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, town accountant. Town, town accountant. I have no changes. Nothing I'd like to discuss. Nope. Um, Assessor, treasurer, collector. Yeah, all these are fine until we get down to uh, 152. Human resource on this one. Okay, so on the human resource, I'd like to propose to take the um, human resource thing and lower it by 20,000. And where I come up with that is I am saying, I know that the there was a contract at one point with the HR director and it, it was up this year. Um, we went last year with a uh, part-time as needed 1099 person who did um, a great job. It, it just showed us that it's possible that we could do we have a full-time benefits person um, who's done a fabulous job. And I just think that we don't really need at this time um, a full-time um, HR director. And is I'd like to um, bring that up for discussion to lower that by $20,000 and to look to see if we could um, reallocate. We have a lot of other needs that we, we definitely not down the road need to focus on. And I think some of these, and, and we were just shown that we can do um, some of these, um, some of these, uh, as a, as needed on a contract basis as a 1099. Um, so anyways, I'd like to have that up for discussion. Um, I know I, it, it's, um, anybody else want anything to add to that? Um, can we open up the 152 human resource tab just to have it? Yes. Amy, can you summarize just one more time what you're sure. trying to take the 20,000 out for? 
Sure. So I would take it out of the top line under human resource salaries. Um, the benefits coordinator was is fine. And that I would say as is with these COLA. Uh, she's been doing it for years and years and years has and has done a fabulous job and all last year did it and saved us a bundle of money over. She's the one that saved all the unemployment. She did so much work. Um, last year we did have, um, uh, uh, just, it just happened that way that we ended up, uh, using, um, Deb who was on because Ed was out. Uh, so Deb was used as a 1099 as needed. Uh, she was part-time. So that's why you see voted last year. It was much lower because we only did it part-time. Uh, so anyways, we, it, it, the human resource was never a position for the longest time. This is a brand new position that we just re, that we just started not too long ago. That's why there is nothing in probably 2019 because we never had the human resource department. So it is a learning curve. And what happened was I feel that because what we did last year, we could see that we were able to get by with just the um, on a contracted basis. If we, I, I feel that if we don't need a full-time person there, we could be saving on this line item and be saving in, um, down the road in, um, benefits and pensions and everything else. So. I just, I wanted to ask one thing. Wasn't Ed saying that that was a part of his contract? He has a contract or am I misremembering that? He has a contract and it comes up at the end of the uh, fiscal year, this fiscal year. So as of next fiscal year, which is what we're working on, there's no con he's done. Okay. The contract is up. So that's, now the, we could do, um, I'm just saying I'd rather not fund it as a full time. If he wants to do the part-time or the 1099, that would be fine. Um, but I'm just would rather pull this back from a, full-time position and, and start saving money in different ways. Amy, if you don't mind, could I just give some, uh, just some input on that? Would that sure. be okay? Yeah. So um, Deb was definitely was contracted out. Deb did have years and years and years experience so things that she could do in half the time because she's, I mean, I mean we're, we're talking probably 30 years doing this. So um, she was able to fit in all of it in part time. And I do think there is a learning curve for anybody coming into that position. Um, I just want to give that feedback. It's your, it's ultimately your decision and the selectman's decision, but I do want to, it's very hard to compare to, to Deb's level of work and, could we find an, I, I do not think we would be able to keep this uh, HR director for full time. He's supporting his family. So he would, I don't think he would stay. It's, it's, it's going to be very hard to replace a, a, get a position for part-time for HR. I just wanted to give that input. Yeah. I got the sense that Deb did it. It was kind of an altruistic uh, thing where she came in in a pinch and like Carolyn just said was super talented and knew what her stuff. And I don't know, I think having, having a human resource manager with a, with a salary like that is, is going to provide benefits to the town. You might have cost savings that you might be able to navigate around. And um, I don't know. I don't know necessarily know if going outsourcing for all those roles are going to be a good thing uh, long, long term for the town. I you know, I, I, yeah. I don't know if you, would look at less hours or not, but I, I, I just, um, <clears throat> it's hard to compare it to any position right now to, to Deb. I mean, she just, she was kind of a just a diamond. She, she was incredibly talented. Um, so I wish I would like to talk more about it if that's possible I would, to, or hear more. It's again, it's, it's my recommendation, but it's not my recommendation to the selectman. That's yours. So, um, I, I would, that caught me a little off guard. So I would maybe like to talk more about that if it's possible. I don't know how you'd 
Sure. I don't know what the rest of the committee feels like. I do know that there's other, I, 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 we, we many times, and, and this is just my thinking, many times we do jump to hire employees. I think many times we should look at either collaborating with other areas, other towns, other, or, other, or just doing it as a contract or, you know, subcontractor that comes, subcontractor that comes in like Deb. Yes, maybe we're not going to be as lucky as Deb all the time, but um, there are other things such as IT and, um, and, and uh, grant writers and things like that. I don't feel like all the time we need to have a full-time person. Um, so that's why um, it is something that was a, a new spot. I know I've only been here for, I've been here for a while, so I've seen it without. I do see that that was the thought is Yes, it's, human resources is going to bring a lot to the table, a lot of savings, a lot of savings. $74,000 plus benefits, plus pensions, plus everything else that we're doing. That's that's a lot of savings. And I'm not see, I'm seeing that we might be able to do get our savings for much cheaper. So, you know, I just think that we should think about it. It is this is would be the time to if you're going to do it. It's a new we like I said, if the contract's up, this would be the time. And we just did it. I mean, we we just experienced it. So it's not like we didn't want to know what to expect. And yes, maybe we wouldn't get someone such as Deb, but maybe we would too. Um, so I get that. And it's not our decision to make this down the road. Um, it would ultimately be the select board's decision to make that that would just this is just a recommendation. It would not be a, I can tell you though, it would not be a surprise to the select board on all these recommendations that, you know, that might be coming up. And, I think and, I, I would want to support keeping the full salary. I feel like losing talent or kind of cutting back and losing talent is going to be a drain long-term. Okay. Uh, can I get any other comments from the group? Uh, I feel that the savings would be not enough to justify doing that. Um, I know it seems significant, but I, it sounds to me like we need a full-time person uh, based on what I'm hearing about Deb's experience and performance. Okay. How many hours was Deb putting in? It's about 20. Te what, technically 19. She sometimes worked more than that. Okay. Was it covering what we needed or, or were we living without? I mean, no, we were. I, I, and I will be honest with you again. She was amazing. If I had years and years experience, but no, she was, she was able to do it. She was, she was always available by phone app, you know, off mm -hmm. the, the time as well. And she would come in and say, I've, I've, I've reached my 20. You're going to see me on Monday. And we, we would say, and okay. Is she, and is she available if we wanted to hire her for 20 as a part-time? Is that something she has any interest in? Or I'm, I'm... I would have to ask her. Okay. Oh, I have a question. Sorry, Paul, were you done? Yeah, I mean, I just, it, you know, I just don't know if we need a 40 or 35 or 37 hour yeah. week HR person. And it'd be great if we could, you know, they used to have counsel on governments and stuff like that, but, and I'm not sure that that worked out the way it should have. But, you know, my question is, is, you know, is there, are there some other towns that have, uh, you know, a 10 hour, 15 hour, you know, some of the smaller towns might, might benefit from a 10 or 15 hour person and we might need 20 or 25 and, you know, split a position between, you know, have like a central person who, you know, um, covers a couple of the towns for these kind of positions, a position like this that we may not be able to justify and still get a talented person for. And that would be my question. So I would feel inclined uh, also to go with Deb if she is um, available and interested in doing 20 hours a week. That would be my preference too. Uh, my, my question has morphed into an observation <laughs> as I was thinking about it. It seems that Ed is also a very professional, experienced person. He mm -hmm. hasn't been experienced here in Hadley, but it seems like he knows what he's doing. So maybe he should be expected to perform at a near level, the same as Deb, 
and maybe we should cut down the hours. So I, that's what I would recommend. If, if 20 hours is enough, that's fine. If it, we need a 25 hour, that's fine. But it, do we need a 37 hour person? And that's really the issue. Well, the other issue is, can we find a person who's gonna be willing to do it part-time? I, I would guess that we will, that there are some, you know, either near retirement or retiring. People are people for whatever reason, don't wanna work a full-time job and that we would find some talent. So. Well, I, I think that also that it's not, you know, this is just the end of the contract. So this is why, you know, if we're gonna look at this, this is why we would do it at this point. Now, if, and we choose to go with the part-time, if we found down the road, we are having trouble um, and the next year doesn't go well, well, we can go back and look to, to move it to back to full time. But um, we went from nothing to all the way to full time. I think that we could possibly go back and do in between and do part time. Or, you know, and, and like I said, right, so instead of employee, you know, a 1099, because sometimes if that person's willing, I mean, there are some times that are probably busier than others. And you, during new negotiations, it's probably a really busy time versus maybe other times of the year, it's really slow. So um, as needed. Okay, so can we just make this as a recommendation, leave that blank, leave it as a recommendation for our discussion with the select board tomorrow, and then they take it under advisement. Is that, Yeah. I mean, ultimately it's their decision, correct? That's how I, I, I believe. So I believe it's their decision to make. Okay. Ultimately, it's the town's vote yeah. decision. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That, that's Sorry. why there's two columns. That's Sorry. why there's a select board and the finance. Okay. Yes, yes. Sorry. Okay. All right. So do we have a number you want to put? Are you suggesting a number, Amy, or shall we? I mean, I, I suggested to... Uh, uh, lower it by 20, uh, by 20,000, because I was, that's, I believe that's where, I mean, that's full time. I don't know the exact number. Um, I thought that just 20,000 was still being conservative that you would be able to, I, I didn't cut it in half or anything. So, um, I don't know. That's my thought was 20,000. Anybody else? Yeah, I would support that. Or if we can just tell them that we would like to see yeah. a, a 20 hour position advertised or yeah. pursued and then whatever the savings there is, you know, it might be a little more, might be about the, what we're yeah. thinking out here or what we're recommending. Uh, so tell me what to put. You want me to, I, 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 just so we have a number, can you put, use a, uh, Take that number and just minus the 20 off of it. Is this, I mean, it'd be nice to know that it's three of you. Oh, you wanna do the vote? We could vote. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's fine because it is Four. something that is we, yeah. So that if it's talked about, they'll wanna know where we stood with this, right. that it's not everybody that might feel. So I agree with that. So um, do I have a motion to, uh, on this, since it is up for discussion, it would lower the human resources from what the town administrator so, requested. So, yeah. move. so move for a reduction of $20,000. Okay. Time. Is there a second? Second it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Paul and Val. So all in favor? Aye. 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 And then opposed. Hey, Dylan. Dylan? Yeah, Dylan's I'll, I'm recording the vote here. Oh, okay, so you're opposed. Okay. Yeah, I am four. opposed. Okay, so it would be. Then it's four, four to one. Go to four to one for one, two, three, nine, one, nine. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, Thank and I'll, I'll have that in your. Okay. So uh, the next town clerk, I don't have, and I don't, there's nothing there that I would uh, change. And 
and um, Board of Registers, nothing there. But I, and Conservation Commission, that is something that we had discussed, but you were going to look into at one point to try to let us know how, how does their revenues come in and where does it go? Yeah, I talked with Janice. Great. So the, um, in that budget, let me go to the, her budget 171. Okay, so we weren't sure because we thought that Janice was paid out of this other revolving fund. This is all Janice. This is not other contract amounts. This is completely her. In fact, she says, I don't, she doesn't think that it's uh, going to be enough this year, but she's working with them on that. Um, and so the supplies and dues are paid out of that. So this is completely to support her and the, and running the office. Um, the revenues, um, there's less than 5,000, at least uh, a year that comes in. Um, I asked her why, uh, why it was said that she was paid out of the other funds. Was that a mistake? Well, she used to be paid out of the, um, that's the way it was set up for years. Just like, you know, like the electrical inspector, these things that go on and on. She was paid out of uh, the income that came into that revolving fund. I don't know if they were higher at one point or whether we had a, a running balance or had received a large amount or what, but I do know she worked less, uh, fewer hours because um, she worked, she had a full-time job elsewhere. So she was, uh, she's now retired and she does have uh, more time to put in. Anyway, she, this, she's paid only out of this and not out of the revolving fund. Now the other fund, I'm not sure revolving fund is the right name word for it, but that's where the notice of intent and filing fees go. So I said, why can't we bring those into the general fund the way we did again with the electrical inspectors? And she says it, it's set up by law um, that when you collect notices, uh, uh, fees for filing of a notice of intent with the conservation commission, there are only certain ways that you can spend the money that comes in and it's on, um, it is on uh, contract services support and various other things. I don't have all the details of it, but we are, but apparently we can't, recapture those fees into the general fund. So that's the way it is. The funds go in over there. So if she does run over, she probably will get paid out of the excess of the notice of intent fund. Um, otherwise, this is completely out of the general budget. So that was what I started to think about because uh, they have discussed, I, I heard what they said about when they collect fees, what their fees were fought for. And just like you said, it's for support their, their contracts and their vendors and, and their supplies and, and, and what they do. So I'm not necessarily saying not to do this. I think this is completely should be up for discussion and we should really discuss this more with the select board. I almost feel like these should be this, these, this money should be coming out or more of it should be coming out of that revolving fund, like you said, when that was my understanding that they, just like with CPA, with CPA, we have, they vote to take money out of CPA to put in an administrative fund in case they need it for anything such as supplies and, and, and if they need to hire um, the planning, um, Pioneer, Va Pioneer Valley Planning Board or something like that. So I feel like they are getting this, this is their income, it's a revolving fund, and they should probably be supporting more of this. And we should, I'm surprised that, you know, we haven't had this up for conversation before, but having them on here as on even line items is surprising. So I think that's something, I mean, it's been happening all along in the past. So I don't want to cut it but at, I don't necessarily think this is the right place for it I don't think it should be here they, they don't they don't collect anything like 14,000 they just collect a few thousand in a year the balance in the account is only 4,000 right now it's only yeah. and that's it a, that's it a balance support a position the fees they take in would not support a position right and I don't I honestly think there is a, a legal issue with uh whether that you can actually do that Okay, so they should probably, how about, you know, and down the road, then well, should we really be giving, you know, financing uh, office supplies, dues, and that kind of thing 
or should that be something? I mean, I, I, I get, we want to support our, our committees and everything. If they don't make, if they don't have enough coming in, then we have to support them. But um, I don't know. I, I, I think that we do need to point this out to the select board. Um, and are the, are the fees set by law or are they set by the town? Um, I don't know what, about the fees. I do know that the rules on how it is spent is set by law, not not a town bylaw. She said it was uh, by state, uh, the, the state law that set up conservation commissions in the first place. Um, so I do know, and, and there are, I do, she was talking one night or they were talking about how certain things are set, the certain fee schedule is set by the state. I don't know if every single thing that they collect is set by the state or if it's by the town. And, and there are some fees that part of that is uh, some of the fees go to uh, the state and some go to the local. So there, there, right. there are going to be some um, specific uh, regulations with conservation. Sure. Okay. She said when they get the fee that comes in, half goes to the state and half goes to her, um, yeah. her um, revolving fund. So. To, and, and, and that's where it brought it up when she said she pays for it and that's where they pay for their 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 position so that's why i was surprised that's where i got it from. right yeah i think she she misspoke or was remembering the way it had been done before and and honestly the board members don't follow it the way janice does i mean she's she's virtually she's the one who keeps an eye on things like that on a regular yeah. basis well if they're if their fund is only a four thousand dollars, obviously, um, and is that is is that just that's usually an average, Linda, or is that very low? Or? That's kind of. I'm looking like they took in thirty two hundred in fees last year. Uh, I, I'm that's kind of when it, my interest in it kind of fizzled out when I looked. I went, oh, that's all. <laughs> it's, it's no forty thousand like electrical inspections. Right. right. Um, so yeah. I went. Eh. Well, I mean, I mean, if it, if it's building up some money, we can always. Can't we always recommend a small transfer of a couple thousand? Just the one or the, one way or the well, other. That's allowed. Yeah. Whatever's allowed. I mean, not to drain it completely and not to not to cut it back per se, but just to adjust it by a few thousand out of the revolving fund. Apply right, no. and I think they they do it themselves when right. when they need to exceed this okay. budget. They use that um, as a backup and. Um, I do know that they're piled up with a number of things right now. There's, there's a back, it was a COVID backup. Now it's all gushing yeah. in at once. I think she said they had like four or five things uh, filed in the, in the past week. And I seriously have never seen her frazzled before, but she was this afternoon trying to get through things and, and then have a meeting tonight. So I know she, um, she I, I know they're really, really busy right now. They have a couple of very big projects going on and the, Riverfront being a, a, a large issue for them as well. Yeah. So, um, all right. All right. I don't know much more than. I suppose we ought to move on, but we'll just bring yeah. it up to it, their attention. Yeah, just for a discussion. It's not a big point, but. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, let's enter going... it in as, as they are, but. Um, so, just enter it in as what, what you have right Okay, 14, 9, 10. Yeah. If there's any, ever anyone who disagrees with what I'm putting in, we'll do, I'll mark it like we were before and, and have a real vote. But otherwise we'll assume that if there's a number over here that it was unanimous. Okay. All right. Planning board, I don't have anything to add to that. No changes. Board of Appeals. Yep. My page break there, huh? Um, insurance is zero because we merged it. Yep. Town buildings is the first one where there was uh, a change. It was the, my, the third point in my email um, that we had in going through it, we realized we had a gap. We did the library budget and said that the telephone and internet expenses had been moved out and over into 190. And then when you looked at 190, it wasn't fair. So um, we just had um, an expense that fell between the cracks. So uh, Jennifer and met with Patrick yesterday and came up with uh, the internet and telephone. So this is actually higher 
uh, by 3,500 3, 3, 3, than what you were looking at before. Okay. All right. Um, and we don't have a full year's worth on that or many of the items that are in this because there are th three new buildings in here. All right. This is another item that I would like to start um, and we'll bring it up for discussion next time. I think, but I, you know, I've, but I, I used to say to David, I, I really think we need to start some type of a reserve account for our building maintenance. Um, and, you know, I feel like we need to have something because a lot of this building uh, maintenance here, or this isn't even the maintenance, this is just the this, um, regular building, right? This isn't the maintenance part. That's right. Okay. Yeah, because I, I was thinking the maintenance. It's, but it's, util it's utilities. It's electricity, utilities. heat. Um, yeah. Do you want me to go to that budget? No, no, I'll do it after when we get there. Okay. Okay, so this is... No, I meant the... Uh, did you want to see the uh, the itemization of this budget? No, I, unless anybody else does. I mean, it's okay. one of those things. It's utilities. It is what it is. I don't think we can argue it. I agree with that. Um, we know we know gas prices are going up and everything's going up. Linda, you got 407 there instead of 47. Oh, you caught me. Keeps going All up. Right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, police and fire. So this is what I had. So I went down to try to see, you know, just to, like I said, do a little bit in the middle. Okay, this was my thinking. Um, so we had level fund, level funded and level service. Well, with the uh, police, they uh, their increase of their budget, they said we need to have level service and the increase would be about 40,000. With fire, they uh, need level service and their increase would be about 20,000. In my head, I was thinking, well, if we, you know, everybody is getting, you know, a little bit, and I'm going to be talking about the other departments too, it would be great to see if we can pull 5,000 out of both police and fire. Now, what I was thinking was, when I was looking at fire, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot, but the, when I looked at their, um, the revenues, it seems like they could, especially now that we're going out of COVID, that they could probably do higher in revenues. So am I looking to really say, no, you know, maybe police could cut by 5,000 and fire could add in their um, by 5,000 and still be, we're doing 5,000 better on both sides. Um, I don't know if any, you know, anybody wants to have any discussion on that or you have any thoughts and, but, the, the, when we go to look at revenues afterwards, you'll see that uh, there, the fire is down quite a bit. If we just increase their revenues, that would be that would be, give the budget a little bit more. Um, and I think that they could, pro if they really work, you know, it, it's not easy to do that. I mean, but they got the full staff, and if they're out there, I think that they could get those revenues up. And 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 with with the police. You know, for the most part, we, you know, out of the 40,000, if we say from instead of 40, can we do 35? I, I just thought it would be a compromise um, and, and show that we did, you know, there's just a little bit there of, of what we requested. So that was, that was my thought. If I could have some more thoughts on that. I am a little nervous about the idea of trying to cut, um, you know, in the in the police department, because you know, um, Mike was talking about how when we compare the cost of um, of uh, policemen in uh, with other communities of comparable size, we actually are underpaying our people. And that's, that's one thing. And the other thing was that um, he talked about um, there's going to be uh, a lot of cost associated with um, reforming police departments across the country and it's just going to cost towns more. So the idea of cutting now 
um, when we know that those costs are going to go up, uh, it just kind of doesn't seem to make sense to me. Can I, can I, Amy, again, I'm just going to give some input. Is that okay with the rest of the committee? I'm not really sure what role I should be playing here, but I, I feel like I have to speak up. If you remember, the budgets they submitted were already uh, decreased three times last year. So what you're getting is not what it would have been this year if there was no COVID. You would not, this is bare bones. Um, regarding the police, you are, he's already notified. You're gonna, you, if you decrease it now, you're gonna have a bigger increase mid-year next year. What it sounds like is, the training that's going to be coming through because of the reform, the police reform, mm -hmm. is going to be significantly more than what you're seeing here. Um, so I am going to be really bold right now because I'm a little confused. <laughs> Do you mind if I just have a little platform right here? Because I just need some guidance right now. Um, with the administrator's budget, so what was the role? I, I, if you can clarify, so the role for me was to meet with all of the department heads, give you a level service and a level funded and go back and forth and kind of clarify for them, clarify so that I was giving you guys the best information based on what the, re the request was from the select board. Um, I am concerned. Um, I, I guess I get paid to, I am paid to uh, be the town administrator and to do the day-to-day -day operations. And to take 5,000 here and 5,000 there after we've already decreased it significantly, I would encourage you one to go back and look back when Mike and Mike were explaining their um, budgets. I think they were really clear how skeletal they were. Um, it's gonna make my job a little harder when we start taking 5,000 away from departments here and there um, to be able to then ask these guys, you have to do more inspections with less resources. Um, I don't think their job is to be revenue generating. I think their job is public safety. Um, so I, I guess I just want to challenge you as a former finance committee. We're, it sounds like we're kind of in a delegate uh, uh, negotiation here. And, and I, I'm a little confused at that. I, I'm, I'm taken aback by it, to be honest with you. So I just need clarification as I move forward with the finance committee what what is the role it is i don't know i guess i'm just a little i'm not sure how i feel right now it's uh as we move forward through the rest of the budget i understand that you guys are the watchdog i was a finance committee member as well um i'm the one who has to go back with this tomorrow and i need to know what the the thought process is behind it well my my thinking was is you you did exactly what you did but what what if the finance committee isn't here to question it or ask anything or to 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 put any recommendations what is the purpose of the finance committee um so so i think the purpose is, this is what we, so this is how we've always done it and and what we've done last year with david so this is where we and 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 we brought up things and and there was discussion and then there was adjustments it's not it's not just it's adjustments for discussion and these are these discuss these adjustments don't necessarily they're not like i said it's not it's just up for discussion then that it gets discussed tomorrow with the select board so do you decide where the 5000 comes out of or do i have to decide that well my recommendation was is let's is there something when i was looking at some of these items okay and i went back and i said well schools doing level funded and we have the library i thought that they would look i'll be talking about that ask for a waiver and then we have the um, council on aging which is getting a grant which shows that they we are going to ask for eleven thousand for that, and then there is um, oh park and rec, and we're gonna we're in our recommendation. You know my my thinking was was we could lower that um, item. So we're going through each and every one, and then fire. I thought that the um, 
what has been in the past, it, it was low and we brought the, the revenues down, but it was in the middle of COVID times that we brought it down. And we're coming back out of COVID times, I feel that we could increase the revenue. So I don't want, I just wanted to say that here is the police with the large, you know, one of the larger ones. I did not, even if it was a, a few thousand, we show that, oh, well, we, we lowered that, we did something. Um, everybody is pitching in to do something. I just didn't want to say, oh, I, I don't, the police is one that I, I, I never touch or never look at. Well, it is a larger department and there are items in there that we could look at. And all departments were assigned to ask to say level funded and um, level funded and then level service. So I thought that it was a possibility to show as a good compromise. I'm not saying they should go to level funded so, whatsoever. Amy, what do you mean by compromise? Can you help me understand that? What you mean by compromise? I, I say that maybe we could bring back the budget by just a little bit and let's look at, let's just relook at the police and fire and see if there's something that we can get out of there just a little. And I, I was just didn't want I to ignore the two. Thank you. I guess, yeah. I didn't want to say let's, and it, if, if, if the board wants to just leave it alone, then that's fine, I'm fine, leave it alone. But I wanted to bring it up for discussion. Um, that uh, I think that we need to do our due diligence and every, all the departments, it's, it's a tough year. That's why they were asked to do a level funded. They were asked to do both. Um, My understanding as a finance committee member is that we're oversight and the town administrator has been working with these department heads and bringing them in front of us for the past month and a half to yep. Kind of hear what they're saying and to and we're there to ask questions about these line items i i do understand carolyn's frustration with us saying uh let's just take five thousand out when we don't we're just kind of blanketing that over this one number if there was a specific item then i would get that but i i don't feel comfortable just going in and saying hey bump up your revenue or cut this out carolyn did work with them to try to come to good compromises and we're just here to analyze oversight, make sure that things are going smoothly. And I trust that the town administrator has done her job and that we've done a good job listening to these department heads. So this is where we, right. And so we did listen. And so this is where we bring it up for discussion. I wanted to bring up the police for discussion. The, the fire, my thought was, as I was looking at the revenues and I think that's where it's a little low, but the police, I don't have, so I wanted to bring it up for discussion. And that's all I wanted to bring it up because I don't, we could bring up their chart. I didn't want to, um, I just wanted to bring it up. Well, going back to Valerie's comment then, I, I echo what she was saying. I, I would feel hesitant to cut anything from them, especially as we're kind of going towards police reform and the extra costs that we're gonna see, especially since listening to Chief Mason's uh, presentation, uh, it really sounds like he spent a lot of time trying to come up with a good balanced budget that is, is fair for his team and can still do the services that he needs to provide. Okay. That's, that's my opinion. No, oh, that's fine. That's good. Um, I think I'm aligned with that line of thought too. Okay. Yeah, I think I am too, but I also want to acknowledge you, Amy, for, um, for, for just looking, it is a big budget and uh, just looking to, to start the conversation about is this a good idea or not. And um, so we had an opportunity to weigh in about whether we thought it was a good idea or not. And um, that was because you brought it up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we don't, won't have a conversation if we don't bring up stuff like that and we don't propose cutting the budget. Any, any comments, Paul? Or no, you're good. Karen, I think, I think in the private sector, what, what frequently happens is uh, budgets get enforced, uh, basically imposed with, with basically uh, departments are sometimes just told, you have to cut this much out. And then it's a, it's, it's a task for the manager of the department to do it. And I think that I think, Amy, that's sort of where you're coming from here. Well, I just want to bring it up for discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's difficult. Uh, I can I can look at any budget that's like over a million dollars and assume that there's somewhere there could be some cutting done, but I don't want to get into the weeds of going through it with a comb, looking at every single item, trying to discuss it. Um, and this is not a lot of money involved here anyway. 
So uh, 5,000 is not really, you know, on a budget this big, it's, it's going to be a blip, not even noticed. So I, I understand where you're coming from, Carolyn. And I think it's just that there's a, a feeling that, um, uh, you know, is there anywhere here? The, the intention here is to find places where we can just trim a little bit off to make more of a cushion um, so that if the revenues don't come in the way we think they are, um, you know, there's so many things that are unfunded or have been cut in our budget this year, every department. I don't think there's any, I mean, there's very few departments came to us that said, we're fine, you know? Yeah. So that's all, that's, that's the intent is to just see, is there anywhere here? And I, and I, but I do think we would, in this case, I think we would want to go back to the chief and say, do you have anywhere you could save five grand on it? And I don't think we want to go, you know, back yeah. at this time with that kind of yeah. question. And, and Paul, I want to clarify again, yeah. six years, five and six years as a finance committee member. Right. Um, it, I, I understand it. And what I guess I, what the role I had as a finance committee member was, was working like a, a guardrail. Was there a budget that was coming in way out of line or yeah. was, so, so I understood, I understood that. Um, it, it, I think what sitting in the position now as town administrator, and I, I hope you guys are okay with me being open and yeah. kind of transparent about this. Cause yeah. I need to know, I it's, I'm learning the Hadley way, I guess. Um, is that we had all, you know, my role was to go back and say, so give me level funded and level service, mm -hmm. nothing new. And so um, they did so much of that going back and forth. It, it was the, it's the, it's the wording I've heard a lot in the last few months is where can I, from the finance committee, where can I cut um, can we, uh, it's kind of a compromise. Um, those are terms I'm used to when I'm working with, um, you know, employees in municipal government or budgets. Um, th that's more what you, like if you're sitting in a union negotiation. So that is what I'm trying to understand that. Is that the role here is that you guys are here to cut? Cause that's what I hear a lot. I heard an apology once. I'm sorry, I couldn't cut any, there was nothing I could see that we could cut. I'm trying to adjust to that and trying to say, okay, so when I come and present the budget, do I have to come with, with that kind of background? This is where I cut and this is what the service impact is going to be. So um, it's just different. So it's just, I, I'm just asking those questions and knowing how I'm going to now support my staff when I go back. Um, so, you know, I just needed to share that. No, I, I, it's not easy for any of us because we're not dealing with an unlimited source of funding here so that, you know, things we'd like to do. I mean, you know, when you hear the, some of the capital needs that are in this town and you look at some of the buildings and the maintenance and so on, um, you know, you can see that there's things not being funded. Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's the frustration level here is where can we find something to pull uh, money out of so that we can one, keep the taxes low for people so they can afford to live here at the same time and their children can afford to stay here, you know, um, when, they, when they settle here. Um, and at the same time, you know, how do we fix all these roads? I mean, honestly, you know, you look at the size of this town, the number of roads that get patrolled, the number of houses that we have, and then the influx of the populations of oh, the schools in the town of Hadley, we're not a little town most of the year. We're, we're, a, we're a medium to small city, you know? Um, and, you know, we, I think that, I mean, I'm only, I've only been on this committee for what, a year now. Um, but, you know, it's a remarkable thing because like, you go to a town meeting and sometimes they come in and they say they've got a 15 year old dump truck that needs a lot of maintenance and the town votes it down. So use it another year. You know, you get three contractors to stand up and say, oh, I got older ones than that. You know, and next thing you know, they can't yes. buy a dump truck for plowing, you know, and I'm not sure what's the right decision because I don't know how good that dump truck is. Could we get another year out of it? But I know that some private companies would squeak through somehow or other. I don't know what they do. You know, I know companies that, you know, that have to make do with that. But and that's not saying our DPW doesn't because obviously they vote these things down and we've got to get through. But that's all I think the committee is trying to do is look at these things as, as best we can and in, in, in an attempt to save money so that we can fund things that absolutely positively we want to get funded again um try and keep the revenue um the 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 downside on the revenue um minimized so that we sure. are able to keep this going i mean you know we're we're offering 
you know, um, cost of living, but there's a lot of people who are working in businesses that didn't offer anything, period. Nothing. Cutbacks, in fact, because of the economic situation of these places. Ask anybody who works at a restaurant. You know, so that's that's why I think, Amy, I don't want to speak for you, Amy, but I believe that the motivation here in mind, too, is that, you know, just trying to see is there anywhere here that the, the department people know everything that's there and where they, you know, what can we live without once in a while? What, you know, what is essential? What's not, you know, um, and, and that's all. And I think that's all. And, 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 you know, I mean, sometimes we're here, we spend 15 minutes talking about $5,000, um, you know, but that's what Hadley has done. I mean, you know, that's the way it's done here, you mm -hmm. know? No, and I, and it's a beautiful town and I love it. And yeah. I'm going to work very hard to make yeah. it to maintain the affordability for the residents. Um, but I also know what it takes to run the town as right. well. So yeah. that's yeah, what I, I get paid for. <laughs> I mean, I, what I what I want is people to not think that that any of us here are trying to be miserly mm -hmm. towards the departments and the work that they do. You know, we are. You know, we when we talk about what our DPW does, what our schools do, you look mm -hmm. at how well the education system is here. You look at how well our streets are plowed. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, honestly, yeah. go go across the river. You know, sometimes in, on a storm and compare our streets to other streets. I don't mm -hmm. not on anybody in particular there, but. You know, um, you know, I think I think that we do squeeze as much as we can in terms of efficiency here, and we're just constantly trying for more. So hopefully no one's offended by the questions is the point. OK. I Thanks. think that's well said, Paul. I think no one should be offended. I think that we should be, um, you know, appreciative of efforts to to cut or or to to uh, minimize cost where we can. Yep. And yep. I know that. A lot of people in this town, they own a lot of land and so therefore have a big tax bill, but don't have a lot of cash, you know, a lot of, you know, cash flow. And I think Amy is very sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually appreciate that very much. I just feel like in this case, there has been uh, evidence of not only a tremendous amount of uh, trying to keep a lid on things in the police department, but also we're looking at in the next year or two, we're going to be finding out that there's a whole lot more that we're going to need to pay. And so it just doesn't make sense to me right now to, to try and cut. Yep. All right. So Amy, where you want to go? Shall we move forward on this one? Just, um, yeah. Uh, sounds like it's not going to go anywhere anyway. So let's, um, yeah, we can keep going forward. Okay. Um, so, Fire and police go in. Yeah, I, I mean, I really think that uh, with the fire, we could when we go back to revenues, we should really talk about yeah. that to look at that. I mean, if you look at those numbers, Amy, what kind of revenues do you mean for the fire department? Uh, the uh, fire department revenues. They're budgeted for fifteen thousand for twenty two and had yeah what, twenty four thousand actual last year or eight thousand. So are you talking about inspection fees? Yep, yep. So, I yeah. hate to see revenue pressure put on uh, public safety at all, police or fire. That really grates against my thoughts on public safety, the role of public safety. Well, yeah, we don't want to do that. I mean, as far as the police, that, that you're saying you're going to be out there giving tickets or something. I'm talking about doing regular, getting back out and getting the inspections done. All the businesses were closed. No, they couldn't do their inspections. But the inspections, I mean, they are what they are. You can't, you know, maximize or minimize them. Well, in 2019, they generated 27. And in 2000, uh, they were projected in 21 to do 31, but they did 24. Mm -hmm. So they were project, they, they were taking in higher until, until we hit COVID, but everything was closed. That's why, you know, I mean, am I wrong on that, Linda, and that, that things were closed? I, I think that, uh, yes, thing, things were things were closed. Yes, that, so I don't know what was uh, getting inspected, but um, I also know that they were pulled in other directions with yeah. the um, emergency services that they were providing. And uh, a lot, the fire department stepped up a lot with um, handling things mm -hmm. um, with the emergency responses and the whole COVID planning. They were very key in that. So, um, I, I just want to make sure that you're all, you're clear though when a department like fire brings in receipts it goes to the general fund it's not something that they get to spend 
Correct. Right. right. Okay. All right. It just, just from a, a couple things, I just wasn't sure that was clear. Okay. So Can I we, think that that's, that's a legitimate um, discussion to have with a, with the fire chief and see how, what, what could be done to, um, Jennifer is, this, is, yes. is this related yes. to the businesses um, and we wait to get called or is there a schedule for, um, for doing in, inspections that isn't being met? Those are, those are fine things to ask. But I do think that the revenues are separate from the, the budget. And as, as someone said, I can't recall who you, you know, it's hard to tell them to generate more revenue while you're also, <laughs> you, then you took away from, uh, if, if you took five money out of their budget. So um, Jennifer, I don't know. It's, have our hand up. Can we? I know I'm not really here and participating, but I would just like to say for the fire department's inspection fees that the select board voted last year during COVID to waive fees okay. for reopening, to get our businesses reopening, I thinking that the businesses reopening with meals, taxes, food, you know, meals, um, beverage taxes, and having the economy reopen and not punishing the business, not, not punishing, but not charging the businesses who hadn't been open for inspections and getting them open and running and getting property taxes paid and stuff like that. So they waived the inspection fees for fire building and licensing. A lot of our yeah. inspection fees got waived right. and they did a reduction in others for 25%. I just want to put that out there. And now okay. I'll go back to being quiet in my corner. Thank, Thank you. you. Good that, point. That's really, really good to hear, to understand. Thank you. So that would make sense why their year to date is, is where it is and why things are so low. And that's completely understandable. Now we're talking about the next fiscal year. Right. Are we gonna, I was thinking, you know, are we gonna. What, why don't we you're, do you're right, Amy, we may have given that information. We may have underestimated uh, those revenues. Right. If they, if they put things back up to where they were in terms of the fee schedule. Right. So that's a discussion for tomorrow. Right. Is that fair? Yep. Sounds good. Good point. That would be great. And thank you, Jennifer, for coming in and telling us. Okay. So. so I don't have anything for the communication. Or the ambulance, because that's a contract. Uh, building, I don't have anything for you. Do though. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Yes. And actually, I should have said I meant under the police, uh, police and fire. Uh, police had the union. Um, the union colas were added into the police, and so that did affect the salaries. Um, that same thing uh, happens with dispatch and you'll see it uh, in the DPW budget. So if you see that these figures are not the bottom line of the worksheets you had, that's probably it. And if it doesn't seem right, give me a call. So I, um, or just let me know and I'll, I can tell you if, if there was something else that I've missed, but now we're into inspections. And so this is a, the inspections, um, Recommendation now is a full 15,000 higher than it was. Just arbitrarily, I put 12,000 on the salary line and 3,000 on expenses. We have, I, I looked at the past three years to see what had been coming into the revolving fund and what it had been spent on. Um, I also, um, I know that the fees went up recently and I didn't know quite how to, the fees that were paying to the inspector, I didn't know quite how to factor that in. So I just did the best we could. Uh, so 15,000 when it got added to the budget and on the revenue side, 40,000 got added in because we do come up out about 20, 25,000 ahead. So, um, so now those were the adjustments, 40 up, 40 increase 40 up, and 15 uh, down. Okay. 15 down. Yes. I think that's a good compromise. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I went into conservation. Like, oh, can I do this again? <laughs> but no, it's a different circumstance there altogether. I like it. Yeah. That works. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, you have the new number. Are you going to put the new number in? Oh, that, yeah. Oh, that is the new number. Yeah. Oh. So I mean, it's just um, I already adjusted uh, Carolyn's column. Oh. To right. allow for these things. 
So, um, so that includes the extra. I think if you go back to your old worksheet, it should be 150, 163, 567, I think. Okay. So that's the 15 is in there. Yep. Here's the school. Yep. We're good with that, I'm right? Funded. I have nothing to say about the school. I mean, because, you know, what down the road, our, our committee should talk to the school on just a one-on-one uh, -on -one to see what where they're at. But we usually have invited the school in during this, you know, we can do it during the summer or, or you know, well, <clears throat> another time. Yeah. Uh, now, highway is another one that has, uh, will be slightly higher because I added in the uh, COLAs for the union contracts. Okay. And um, yeah, that, and yes, that and water and sewer will have that addition. And then I don't have any, uh, the only other changes in park and rec and we'll so get the, there. So the, why, so the COLAs were never in any of the union contracts? Um, no, they were being negotiated, Amy. So what All the they, unions were being negotiated. Right. Well, they were being, what had been done in prior years when it was negotiation, da David would take this chunk of money and tuck it somewhere uh, like contract increases. Um, he didn't want to put it between the budgets to indicate what he thought was going to happen because until they're really settled, uh, he, he didn't want to, to have it out there. So that's what we were kind of, I think, didn't we talk about maybe putting it in the reserve or maybe I did, I didn't know where we were going to put it, but as it turned out, uh, Carolyn told me today that they were, they were all set and the contracts are actually going to be signed tomorrow night. And it's at one and a half percent, just as the um, rest of the town. So in your worksheets before, uh, with what you were working with, the one and a half percent for non-union employees was added in. And then, um, and now the one and a half percent has also been set for, for union. So fortunately, so the whole, the balance isn't disrupted. So that worked out well. So then I did put it in the individual budgets. Great. So how are we doing? Well, I, highway maintenance, I, the highway department, I wanted to touch base on. There was something in there um, that I, I thought that, you know, possibly we could adjust. Um, anybody else wants to bring up anything? <laughs> I just, I try, you know, I'm trying to read through and I go through every line item trying to do my due diligence here. I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't want to be the only one <laughs> saying that I actually you know, going through each line item, I'm just trying to do the best job that, you know, that I'm, I don't want to just, uh, just say, okay, and, and never look at it. So anyways, the, in the highway, I was looking at a total of a 10. Um, and where I was coming up with that was, there was the increase we had in the, um, you know, from last from last year, a five thousand dollar increase from the street and pedestrian way maintenance, and we also had a fifteen thousand dollar increase from the uh, vegetation management. I'm looking. And down here, okay. Yeah, uh, I I I would recommend. In my thinking, I would recommend lowering the budget between those two items by ten thousand. And how I, I I get that the trees. They, we, they were over, okay, and I get that. And we have been doing the trees and they and those were over. But we did do this past two couple of years, we did a lot of trees, a lot. So Verizon went up and down um, 47 and they just did tree after tree and they were even going up higher on people's property. They, and then they went down coming. So they were going all around, Verizon was doing the trees. And then with the storms, I get it. They had to do a lot of trees and they, they did. And then they went over and we'll probably end up having to take it out of finance or something if a storm hits and we have to help them fund that because of an emergency. But my suggestion would be, okay, if we have to help them fund it again because of an emergency, we do. But if it's not an emergency, let's not do it this year. These, you know, a lot of trees were down. I mean, we've taken down a lot of trees so far and it takes you know, a long time to grow back and, and maybe some of these trees aren't the worst and they can hold on another year or something. So anyways, that was, that's my thought is 
we can uh, look to bring back those. Yep. So we're close to 54,000 over right now. Yeah, there was, there was some storms and there was uh, some big things that happened, but it wasn't what has happened in the past when I looked at where we were in the past on what we spent. Um, in, in the past, I, I noticed that we were at, and the actual spending of that line item was 29,000, or I'm sorry, yeah, almost 29,000 in 2019, you know, and then we we're down, you know, so. And so Amy, I just want to also share, you're going to be um, hearing about three uh, issues with, well, two of them involve trees, um, about some uh, emergency infrastructure projects that we're going to have to do immediately. And one is some wiring that went up to one of the wells that was overgrown by trees. Um, the three projects, uh, two of them do involve landscaping and removal of trees, are going to be about $130,000. So I just caution you to chip away too much at that. $24,000 is very low. Well, how is that going to work if you only have, well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not saying $24,000. I, I wasn't saying bring it all the way back to the twenty-four. And the, how are you going to, if you said it's a hundred and something thousand dollars, we're working on that now because these are emergency uh, uh, issues that came up. So okay. we're working on that now with the funding. We'll be talking about that with you because it will it will have to do um, some. You've already talked to the state that we need to um, overspend uh, for this for these three projects because they are emergencies. And um, we'll we were talking about it today in the fi on our finance team in house to discuss how we're going to do that and how to address it at town meeting. Senator, didn't, didn't Linda say something last time about this with when uh, Chris brought it up that there might be some of the money could come out of the um, revol um, enterprise money for water? That they oh, would, for the like we could split it up in bits. So some of it could come out of that. Some could come out of, might not be the whole thing coming out of the general budget, but there were some other sources or am I, not remembering properly. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're putting the pieces together, but definitely right. some okay. could come out of the enterprise reserves. All right, something to look forward to. Just that trees are a big issue in Hadley. And um, oh. yes, this year we did get really, really nailed and those storms yep. did not help. Um, yep. But I, I, I would hate to see that line item get too low because um, we're, you know, we're, we're in, uh, a safety issue right now with the, the wells and electrical that got intertwined with trees that were overgrown. And it's now at a critical state that if anything were to happen to that connection, there would be no alarm system in place. So it's something that we, it, this is another example of just putting off pro, a project that should have been taken care of for the last several years. So I'm just, I'm a little protective over that line item, but I understand what you're saying. It was a tough year this year. So I just, but I do, I do have to give you that information. But what you were saying, my understanding is when you came that you were talking about that being a capital item, this is a, I don't see that they were, it wouldn't have been a capital item if it had been maintained. So I don't, I, this is one line item that I would like to see kind of go continue to go up just a teeny bit each year so that we aren't faced with a $130,000 project. These were all a result of, of, uh, no, of maintenance being deferred. And that's why this keeping this low, will continue that uh, um, pattern of, of deferring maintenance that can protect us from these larger uh, issues of failure. Um, so is that making sense? Yeah. Yeah, but, that makes sense. Um, it, it, I mean, I get it when, when you have the storms too, but they took, they, the storms do a good job on weeding out which trees are pretty bad because it becomes, an, they tell you which ones because they start falling down. But I was very happy to see what um, Verizon had done. They had done a lot of things, a lot of trees, um, which was great. Um, all great. right, so. Um, what are you proposing, Amy, to trim it back to? Pardon uh, the pun. Yeah, I, I, I would propose to um, 
do a, a total of, of 10. So I would, and I, if you're, Carolyn, you want to talk the other one I was talking about with the street and produ pedestrian way maintenance, that's for um, an increase of 5,000. It was from the 45,000 to the 50,000. Um, you're looking to put um, an, an additional 5,000 in there. And then, um, so between those two items, I was talking about a total of 10 was my, rec my was my thoughts. Um, if, if you want to, if you want to talk about, you know, your, your thinking why you, um, you wanted to put something against, you know, with the street and pedestrian way maintenance. Now I know that down the road after route nine, it's gonna, it's a mess and it's going to be a mess for the next year or for a while anyways. And the maintenance and who knows, and, and we're going to probably after that line item is going to be skyrocketed once we get sidewalks in there and, and we're going to have to take care of Route 9, and it's going to be a big mess. But right now, for next for this next budget, I not necessarily see that um, that we had to do it in this budget season. Like I, I it, but down the road, we're going to have to figure out a way to take care of our streets yeah. and and with the with the plowing and all that. Any. So you're proposing the arborist vegetation management line item to become ten thousand instead of forty thousand? Yeah. So uh, no, not ten. No, I bring it down. Cutting it by thirty-five is what I think she's proposing. So well, well, and please, someone else jump in with something else if you have anything. I, Just my thought was uh, to to um, lower that by five thousand and make it an increase of only ten ten thousand two ninety six and. To, Remove the increase of the street and pedestrian way maintenance, and, and leave that more level. But if if, if someone else wants to adjust some or think some something else, please. That, I mean, that I'm I'm sp I'm split on it. I mean, I I agree that the storms that we faced last year were higher than or there's more than usual, so there's higher cost than usual. But I also hearing what Carolyn's saying, and there is a, a lot of deferred maintenance, and I just don't want that to come bite us in the in the future, um, I don't know. But and we're already how much in the in the hole on that? Was it fifty? Well, I, I think we're fifty four. So one of the reasons it was forty thousand, it wasn't. It, it was the storm, but it was trees that, if they had been cleared, would not have caused some of the issues that had happened during those storms. So I'm just adding that to it. But I understand where you're coming from, and we would have we'll have to come just like what's happening this year. Um, I, I it's a little hard because I was hoping some of these questions would come up when uh, Chris was here talking about his budget because we did spend a lot of time on each line item, and he had very good reasons on why some of these line items were where they're at. Um, you know, what I see when I look at the line item of the pedestrian and street and pedestrians, I think of like, okay, like is that just cleaning them? I think it involves more than that. And I'm sorry, I just can't remember what Chris had focused on, but I can remember questioning him about that. What was that? And it made sense. So again, this is where some of these answers, I needed the department head to be able to say, what's the impact? So to, to have you say, let's cut this. Um, I, I wish I would like you to know what that impact was, but again, we can over, if that's the, you know, I don't know overspend next year and I come back and say, you know, Chris needs more money for this and this is why. So, okay, so in my, if I, if, if, if just to put out something, then I would put a recommendation in my head, but let's, someone else please bring up a, a different number or, or say no number at all. Um, I would like to just say, let's, let's cut back the, the trees for, um, you know, and, and, and leave the, if you want to just leave the pedestrian alone, just cut back the trees and, um, and, and make the line item, cut it by 10,000, leave an increase of 5,290 something. So in, in my mind, I was looking at the bottom line for Linda being instead of 91 being, I'm sorry. Cutting it out, so it, instead of 812, yeah, 802. Uh, but I would, 
And we can uh, just bring that to vote. It is just up for discussion. Anybody? Well, uh, for me personally, the, um, the pedestrian uh, maintenance, I, I feel very strongly that that needs to be kept at a high level in, uh, in Hadley. I think a lot of people walk a lot in Hadley and I think it would undermine the quality of life in Hadley if we, um, if, if we made the sidewalks less passable. And the only reason I say, it, I, I mentioned this at, um, at, at a select board meeting last year or before COVID when um, Chris had brought it to the select board at the time. And um, I just mentioned our experience in St. Paul where we have a school and we spend a lot of time there. And what we learned there is after they did that, they cut it so that um, the town was no longer doing the sidewalks in our neighborhood. And instead each individual was required to take care of their little stretch of sidewalk. <clears throat> and what we found was that it, in the winter time, it made the sidewalks in, in, impassable, you know? So if you were running to catch the bus, you were doing it on the street, not on the sidewalk. If you were walking your dog, you're doing it in the street, not on the sidewalk. If you're just out getting air and, and trying to get some exercise in the middle of the winter, you're not doing it on the sidewalk, you're doing it on the street because the sidewalks are just too dangerous. And I think it would be a terrible shame to uh, have that happen to us in Hadley because um, I think a lot of us really enjoy um, walking in the wintertime as our form of exercise um, and uh, to, to uh, take away the town's even steady, reliable maintenance of the sidewalks would really undermine the quality of life for people living in Hadley. Yeah, I guess where I'm standing is 10,000 in a $17 million budget. We're talking about fractions of the base, basis point and like the, the impact of deferred maintenance on the long term is just not great. Like I want to be living in the town 50, 60 years from now that is taking care of itself today. So that, I guess that's where I would stand. I, I, I agree. Would, I would agree with that, Dylan. I, I, I do think, I, I think that our town has been really well led um but i think that the one one place where where we have not necessarily served those who come after us is uh by being too um frugal to maintain our historic buildings and for somebody like me i came from oklahoma where a very old building is like 1920s so for me to come to hadley where there are some very very old buildings that are just you know a, a part of our history and to see that we've let them fall apart because we didn't have the will as a town to, um, to, to pay for their upkeep, uh, especially when our tax, taxes are so low, whether you look at it from the point of view of, of rates or not. I, I, I think that you know, when I compare where I used to live in, in Amherst and where I live now, I have a, a much better house and I'm paying a lot less taxes. So um, I, I do think that it would, it would improve my sense of uh, fulfilling our duty to, you know, future generations. If uh, if I felt that we were doing a better job of protecting our historical, valuable assets. Okay, so should we want... put this to a vote or? Yeah. So the vote, the motion. You want to make a motion? We're going. You're restoring the ten thousand on that one. Is what I'm hearing. Uh, to leave the funding as it was proposed. Yeah. So the, okay, the vote is, uh, did you just paste that in there, Linda? Okay. I did, yeah. I didn't okay. mean to, I wasn't influencing you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, right. shortcuts. So we, have a, we have a motion, I'll second the motion, okay? The motion was to rest, uh, to fund at 812-591, correct, Dylan? Yes, correct. Okay. And I'll second it. Uh, any more discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? One. Okay, okay. so great. So it is four to one? Yes, but yeah, at that amount. Yep, yeah. perfect. Okay, so snow and ice, I don't have anything to add to that. Street lighting, 
nothing to add. Okay. And highway building maintenance. Now, I don't really have anything to add to this dollar, but this is the one item that, and, and Valerie just went on and talked about how important it is to keep up our buildings. This is the one item where, so if they don't use the highway building maintenance, right, so we're not using it, the money goes back to free cash. But the problem is some of the big projects to fix our buildings, such as like paint town hall, we don't, that's like over $200,000. We don't have the money saved. We need to start saving some money. We need to have this money go into a reserve fund for the money. So I would like to propose um, at some point, and I, I, I don't think I can do it right now and right here, but I think we need to look at uh, to start up a new, um, and maybe we do it in the fall, um, start a new reserve fund for the um, building maintenance. So that way, when we need to paint a building, we will have the money. When we need to do the roof, we'll have the money because these are big projects at prevailing rage and, and we don't have the money for these big projects. I don't feel like we have enough money to put in where these are just band-aids. It's not very much for all these buildings that we have. I, I support that entirely, Amy. I think that is an outstanding idea. I, I agree. I, yeah. But and in the past, we've discussed having a, an employee who was a painter and a maintenance person, and which might be a way to save a lot of money. Right. I, I like that idea too. Yeah. Okay. So I Amy, guess- oh, okay. Sorry. Linda and I will look at different ways that you could have that happen because it may not be a reserve fund. It could be something else, but I love that you guys are bringing this up because it is so true. You really- both of what you said, uh, and a, you know, as uh, almost like a stabilization account, yeah. plus somebody who you can, you're not having to pay, pay prevailing wage to do little projects that are needed everywhere in town in these buildings. It's a great I idea. It's a great idea. So, uh, but for now, let's put in just what building maintenance has. Same with the cemetery. Right, Board of Health, they seem to be the same, so nothing there. Okay, Council on Aging. Here I would, this, in my, my, what I was thinking is I would like to see um, the expense here be the same on the Council on Aging, but then I would like to see if you could add to the revenue side and add in the $11,000. Um, Haley's the one that said it. She said the grant that she got was for the full amount of the vans, of the transportation. So whatever they spend in this line item, if they feel that they need to have 11,000 in the line item for expenses for the van, we will spend it, but we get reimbursed. Kind of like the ambulance. The ambulance, we have a contract, we spend it and we get reimbursed. So that in my mind, it's the same similar thing as the ambulance. What can't we just add it back in as putting it as a rebate from PVTA? Yeah, as a, for that item. I think you can. There is a difference. The ambulance is a contract. Yeah, this is a grant. And we and if we if we don't usually put in, we, we don't ever put in grants as revenue. Um, I, I see what you're saying because she's putting something in there. You know, we're going to get it back. Um, I don't think, I think you can put a grant into a, the, a general fund. And I don't. Can, can you count on a grant? I mean, how long? I mean, you can, it's, 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 she's got, it's pretty much either year to year. Uh, it's typically she has to recontract with PVTA every year. They have to go over it. So it's never, um, sure. It's guaranteed for sure for next year. That was, I'm, I'm very is, comfortable okay. with that. Um, but it's never, you never know if the next year, if you're going to have that funding. So next year we would want to you know, relook at it, but it just feels like if you can take it out, you should be able to put it back in. It should be a wash. 
instead of just having it one sided. Right. I just don't know what kind of slippery slope we start going yeah. down when we start putting a, a start entering grants. Um, it's something like, well, you, you know, we know it's we know it's there. I know this year they're also uh, erratic in spending it. She submits afterwards, and I think that uh, it took three months, and then we got two in a row. Um, I, I'd like I to know. I could talk to the accountant. Account. Because she has a revolving account, correct? She does have a revolving account. Yes, yeah, so but that's something she, to look at. But it's we, we could have it the expense of it come from else uh, from the revolving account and put the grant into the revolving account, and then they'd both be off the books. I mean, off of this, not the books, and be in the books. <laughs> um, but it would be not showing. But what you don't like is that it it impacts the uh, our, our balance by eleven thousand to the negative. Yeah, I just feel like it's a it's one of those things that should be a wash. Um, if, if it's completely funded, then, uh, it, it, you know, so they pay the. But I, I think hmm. we need to get Haley's input to clarify, to clarify All right. that. Well, and I'd like to talk yeah, to the to account how, how to come out. But she's the one that said it, she was right. was going to be 100 percent. OK, so right. if we find that out for tomorrow before our meeting and then when we're another one for that point. The, the punch list, as they call it, I think. It's so that's $11,000 for the van grant. Um, and then I'd like to talk to the accountant, too, because I mean, if they if we're told just don't you can't put grants in there, then that's that. But the what, what Carolyn is suggesting, perhaps, is you take the expense out of the budget and, and have it paid from another source. So, OK, we'll see what we can do with that tomorrow. So do you want to, in the line item, maybe put 124, put the full amount in, Linda, but then maybe where you put votes, just say, uh, maybe question mark, 11,000. <laughs> right here. Yeah. That's a lot of question marks. <laughs> I have a big question on that one. <laughs> the 11K issue. Yeah. Oh my gosh, not getting any better. One, two, four, six, four, one. Make that come to the right so I can see it. How's that? Better. Hold. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. All right. Let's keep moving along. For veteran services, I would recommend to lower that by 1,000 because of the parade that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, that's in 21's budget, though. Yeah, that's not. Oh, okay. Then scratch that idea. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be getting that thousand back this year, so it'll be going to free cash. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, oh. there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Is that the word on the street? No parade. Well, by the time they even allow something, are they going to have time to even? It looked, sounded like there was going to be no parade. And even if they would at the, you know, the 10th hour allow it, are you going to have time to put it together? Why don't we just okay. rerun films of the previous year's best of on, on the Hadley channel? <laughs> Pick a nice, nice sunny day. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember <laughs> when. <laughs> a, an unmasked Memorial Day parade, huh? Well, nowadays, it's veterans. I'm sorry, parade. Veterans Day. Yes. Yeah. Everybody right. gets in their cars and keeps driving around. Yeah. All right, uh, $100 to the Oliver Smith. Yep. Yeah, and then the public library. I thought that um, they should ask for, he, he did say that they can ask for a waiver. And I'm thinking if there's ever a time to ask for a waiver, this would be a good time to ask for the waiver. Um, and it is just uh, um, the waiver. I, I mean, it's a brand new library, brand new everything. And if there's ever, um, and, and we usually fully fund them all the time. Um, but if there is a time to ask for a waiver, I just feel like this is the time. So, um, and that would be going under the line items of the, uh, uh, the, the new supplies, the additional books. I'm not saying cut all of them. 
you know, of course they need new supplies and new books, but they could, they could uh, lower it by the amount that they have. They have um, quite a bit of new stuff. Uh, I mean, from the new library, but, and can they ask for a waiver? He said he could. So my suggestion um, would have been to cut it by, uh, to take 10,000 out. And uh, this is in regards to their accreditation and their level of books that they have to purchase, correct? Yeah, and we've never asked them to do it ever. So one year, I don't think that, um, and he said that they could ask for that waiver. So I didn't think that was a huge deal. Right. Do we need a motion? You know, yep. I'll make a motion to reduce by 10,000. The 610. Library. Well, that, 10K. I'm not sure how I can vote on that because I would say yes, conditionally, you know, like, yes, let's, let's reduce it by 10,000 if we can get that waiver approved. You know, so I'm not, I, I'm not sure Eight. whether to vote yay or nay on this. Okay. So you're putting them below 21. I mean, yeah. Um, you're putting them below where they are now. Is I was that what looking you're at the particular line item. I, it, is, line so I understand what the waiver is. Is that they'll get the 10,000 from somewhere else or you're just saying that this is a year that they don't have to fund yeah. the, or buy the books? So yeah. can I, it's not that easy. <laughs> can yeah. I butt in again? Sure. Please do, thank you. So waivers are for towns, um, now, COVID could be different this year, but um, so when a library has to go for a waiver, it's because you're not paying us the certain percentage um, by mass general laws that a town has to pay to support the local library. When you don't match, when you don't meet that waiver, um, you can, you're under the, not the threat, but the potential of losing that certification and not being able to have, so Hadley couldn't go to Northampton and take out a book. You couldn't use the Mars service. Um, I think it would be different this year. I think you have a chance. What I do think, I, I really would encourage you to ask Patrick first what the impact is on certain increments of a deduction, because that may be, there may be different criteria or whatever. I just feel to say just randomly 10,000, I think you, you, you really do need to have some input from Patrick the, because the other reason is you just built a brand new um, library. You can't just apply for a waiver to say, we just don't wanna pay the money this year. They're gonna look at a lot. They're gonna look at you just put up a brand new library. They're gonna look at um, you know the history of have we been able to keep up? What, what was the predominant thing of why we couldn't spend it this, why we didn't have money for the budget this year? Um, so I just want to caution you, I wouldn't rely heavily that that waiver could happen, but I, I also would like um, Patrick to be able to provide you with a lot more information about everything that's involved with applying for that waiver and what the criteria is for it. Yes, I, I would agree with that. I, 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 I would, uh, I, again, I think it would be a terrible loss if we lost our ability to um, to share among other libraries, you know, I know, especially during this time of COVID, as a um, as a big consumer of the library's services, it would have been a terrible thing if he couldn't have gotten books for me from from other towns. And so, I think it's really important to keep our accreditation status. But um, so again, it's like, well, if he can get a waiver this year without it without it impacting our ability to share among other libraries, then I guess I, I, could, I could go along with that, but I, I certainly don't want to put that at risk. All right, well, I don't, I'm not sure how you accomplish this if you, don't, if you don't underfund it so that they apply for the waiver. If you fund it, they're never going to, mm -hmm. there's no waiver to apply for. So yeah. I'm not sure what to do. If we were to move $10,000 into the reserve so that if they find they can't get the waiver, we reinstate it on that basis. Would that be acceptable? Carolyn, what do you think? Uh, subject to hearing from uh, Patrick, was it? 
Well, that ten thousand is going to show up either in reserve or the budget, so it's it still going to show up in. It's still going to show up in your bottom line. Right. Well, um, we get the, didn't we get a waiver this year? I, I thought I thought everybody got a waiver. So. Am I wrong? Okay. Yeah, I I think I really think uh, I, I guess a part of it is we owe it to Patrick to at least get yeah. his information about that. It yeah. is just not simple of filling out a piece of paper yeah. and sending no, it in. Fine. It's much more complicated than yep. that. Sure. Again, we're only talking ten thousand dollars here. I would, I, um, I, I would at least ask it. Ask the question. All right. I mean, I would ask them. I would put it in, like Paul said, if we don't, and then if we, I mean, if if we, um, this isn't something that is is going out. Our, I, I believe we could just because we're bringing this to the select board, we there's still going to be changes before town meeting. It's not. Yeah, but just just no. always remember that next year, then you're going to have to come up with twenty thousand dollars, so that jump's going to be even higher, because. Once you lower it for that waiver, you're still going to have to, you still have to make up for that. So it might not be 20,000, but it's certainly going to be more than the 10,000. It's probably going to be a bigger jump so that you can meet the certification. Does that make sense? So well, each I year that you continue to ask for a waiver, you get further and further behind in the ability to make that match. I thought Patrick did say when he was visiting with us, I thought he did say that he was going to try to apply for the waiver. That's what I thought. Why don't, can we find this out tomorrow? Yep. We we'll just put another question mark in here. Fund it with a question mark 10,000. Are you okay with that, Amy? And then if, or, or take it off and however you yeah, want to I'm, I'm okay with that. And if he has a, he wants to come back and say, oh, I can do the waiver, but it would only be the most I could do the waiver for is two thousand, or the most I could that's, do the waiver for is oops three thousand, yeah. well, and that's that. Whatever. I don't. I, okay, that's fine. Just mm -hmm. we can find it out tomorrow. So put it on the yeah. punch list and let's keep going. Are you okay, Amy? I don't want to. I'm okay I'm with taking, that. I'm not taking the chair there, but I, I I don't know what the is. Everyone else okay with that? I think that's a that's fine to do it that way. Yeah, let's just find out more. Okay. I don't, I don't, like I echo what Carolyn's saying. I don't want to get in the hole if that's what it is, if you're yeah. going to, yeah. So it'd be nice to hear more. Okay. okay. Leave so, so no vote then, correct? Yeah. I'm going to strike that for my vote tally. <coughs> Excuse me. So you don't even, you, you don't want a placeholder in either? I'm not following. Are, should I put the 203960? D2 in? Or did you want it the other way around? Yeah, that's what I was understanding is the full amount in, and then we'll okay. talk about the waiver. Is that correct? Okay. That's Everyone? I, I, don't, I don't think it matters either way, whether, yeah. whatever. I think that's either. fine. I, I think we can ask and see if, 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 if he thinks that he can get a waiver and he tells us what the amount is, then we'll make an adjustment based on that. If we okay. have to make up for the waiver the following year, then I'm not sure it's even worth bothering. If it, you know, if that's the case, okay. But if they, you know, just let you go back to normal funding after that, yep. then whatever, you know. Um, so, right. uh, park. so we'll move on to park commissions. This park and rec. My, okay. we my, have a change, Amy. Yeah. You want me to go? Okay. This director's position was funded. Oh, let me see if I can get at um, thirty-seven and a half hours. The reason it was funded at 37 and a half instead of 30 was that the Park and Rec Commissioner last year took on the Hadley Kids after school program as a manager of it or a director of it. So she was, Jenny was running the program for them and the money was to be paid or it was initially paid by the school. So she got 37 and a half hours, but the school was reimbursing for the seven and a half hours. That arrangement is over. Um, so uh, there was never, so the 37 and a half hours never was really a benefit to the town. We were, all, the town was only receiving 30 hours. Um, so we just don't need to fund that. Um, so. That makes sense. We. So 30 hours, you said? 30 yes, hours. 30 hours times 52.2 times 24. Yeah, we had had in there 47, 743. And now we're reducing it to 38, 336. Okay. 
I will be back in a minute. Okay. So um, that's where I was going with that one. So. Oh. oh. <laughs> you wanted to cut it to 30, okay, it's 30, well, 30 hours it is. Well, um, I wanted to cut it back to, I was. Yeah. I, I wanted to cut it back to before COVID, before all this started. And when I went back to look, I was looking at, it was close. It was 35 and I, or let's round it. Right, in 19. Yeah. And, uh, and that was when everything was full force, right? And we had great programs. And now it's going to take time to get back to our great programs. And now, once again, similar to HR, this position is not, and this position is an op going to be an open position coming up for the next fixed right. fiscal year. So right. at this time, this is the time to adjust that, I, in my thinking. Um, so yeah. I, I agree with that. And uh, yeah, and at such time as there's more to be done, you might consider putting in an assistant at a lower level, lower pay, just a thought, um, depending on who's available. So, okay. So let's see, you support our change. Fifty-one five sixty. then. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Circle Storm. 300. Long term the same. Same. Yep. I wish there were some things you can do here. You can at the end, but not the uh <laughs> this this is what it is. All right. One six oh six four two eighty three four sixty. Unemployment, um, just to be aware, I mean, if there, if we do come to the point where you're talking about layoffs and you did, even the one you discussed this evening of cutting back hours, they're entitled to um, unemployment. Even if it's contract, a contract ended? Yep. Okay. And even if they're still working part-time. Okay. But once we, if we later have person on 1099, that it's as needed, then then it's not. So if, oh, if, oh, I see. I, I thought when you said contract, I thought you meant when the uh, the director's contract, the uh, HR director's contract. You meant if we have a contract services. Yeah. Okay. If you have contract services, no, no, no unemployment. There's your discussion item. Yep. So at this point. I, you know, um, this is up for discussion, but I would just not put anything in there and push it off to the fall. And hopefully when we get the adjust in my thinking, when we get the adjustment um, and that comes in and um, hopefully we can fund it fully um, in the fall. So, yeah, as I said, I don't I don't fund it during the first uh, for cash flow reasons. I wait till later in the year to start funding it. Um, so I would not be spending it until Christmas, about December, January. So if we are able to put it in in the fall, that'd be great. But certainly um, cutting that doesn't affect services. And I think we can get away with one more year without it impacting us uh, in any way. Do you think one more year, no impact with the, the uh, bond rating? Exactly, okay. exactly. They, they, yes, because it, it was a big factor in our uh, get, receiving the high bond rating in the first place. That, and um, there wasn't going to be any, uh, there wasn't really going to be any concern about it during COVID. We were told, you know, it's, a, it's, it's okay. It's understandable many are doing that. Um, if we did find it was going to be a problem not to fund it, we still would have the option, as long as everything else is stable, we have the option of funding it out of stabilization fund, which we did a couple of years ago. Um, if it looks like it's important that we keep it going and it doesn't fit in the budget. Um, I would like to see it continue to get funded, obviously, but uh, it's one but of the easier, 
that's one of the easier cuts to make, isn't it? Okay. So, would it pay to just put fifty thousand in there? We probably would want, want to do the uh, do amount. what we had before. Okay. Maybe six. The maybe. Would you how have about twenty? That, Amy? Sure. I just didn't know if it would really, if it would really, if it doesn't, if we're going to look at funding the whole thing in the fall and you don't mm -hmm. pay it into the fall. Then it doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't fine. Matter. Okay. I just yeah. want, the, I just want the electorate to understand, or maybe this is a discussion at, at the town meeting to let them understand that we are trying to chip away at this, this monolith of a debt. Yeah. I mean, I, I we all think it's important. I think that the, yeah. the whole group in, 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 it's just one of those things that, you know, let's, and, and then we have, that is the one thing that, uh, you know, sometimes we take out a stabilization. We say, oh, we'll put back to stabilization. We never put back like so many times we said, we'll do it, we'll do it. And then I feel like we don't do it. Something comes up, but OPEB, we said, we're going to take out an OPEB, but we'll put back. And I feel like that one we do, we really focus on it and we've been putting it back. And we've been, even if we had, like I said, like Linda said, two years ago, we took it out of stabilization. We really do focus on that. And we have been really putting that in. Yeah. So All right. I do feel- And, it's, and it's paid off. It's paid off for us. We're really- uh, Yeah. Oh, and I sent you all the email. You were asking about it last time, Paul. Um, yeah. The, uh, yeah. About how much we have- um, For debt. More than chipped away. What are we at? About almost 22% of our yeah. liability. Yeah. And, um, that's not all what we've given. That's what we've okay. given and the investment income and that's come back. Right, which is great. And I think yep. I'm, I'm all for putting this money in, you know. Um, I mean, listen, I wish we could fund, you know, a fleet of trucks to cut the, trim all the trees back and, you know, all of this. None of it, I'm, I'm not fundamentally against any of this. You know, I would increase all these departments. I think we do run on a, on a very thin uh, budget. Uh, I just don't know where we can get the money from. And especially right now during COVID. When there's so many businesses that are hurting and, and, and yeah. people earning money who are just in, you know, working places that are living in our town. So, you know, I, what I would like us to do though, is I would like us at town meetings to let people understand how big this town is, make sure they understand how many roads we do, how many patrol, you know, how many miles of patrolling are involved, you know, to have a town of, you know, I mean, we only have two or three fielded police officers out there in cars patrolling for a town that's really probably like having a 50, 60,000 person town. That's also yeah. very spread out. I mean, it's not high rise, it's not a high rise downtown, you know, and just the accidents alone on route nine and on some of the other, you know, intersections we have, um, you know, take up a lot of their time and the fire department for that matter. So I, 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 I know we're running on a very thin budget and I really appreciate the work that our people do. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to nitpick all this stuff. I just want us to ask the questions hard, as hard as we can to see if they can come up with creative ways to, you know, continue to give services for less um, with what we have to, because the people here have to pay for it. That's all. Mm -hmm. All right. We're closely going home here, I think, right? So, so I, I will mute. No round of um, And I, I do want to point yeah, out- Sorry, I was just going to wrap up OPEB. I agree with Amy. Uh, okay. Wait till the fall. Okay. okay, I'll put I'll put zero in there for now then. And the last line is stabilization, which David always would put in the budget just to remind people we really ought to be giving to stabilization. And then, then it's uh, we have to usually wait. Okay. So I'm not quite. We, all, we also have to go back to reserve fund. We skipped that in the beginning. Ah, I don't know if we that's touch the on other. That again. I knew we were off by something. That total didn't seem right. Okay, so that's another that's another hundred thousand. Okay, let me get up there now. Yep, more and more. There you are. I have a question. So it had had been fifty the year before that, right? No. Yeah, yeah, fifty. We brought it up. Or no, it been seventy-five to no, yeah, it had been fifty. We brought you brought it to seventy-five, and then brought it. 
I'd actually forgotten that we'd already brought it up once when I put in the hundred, but um, I still think I think it still makes sense if we can do it. Okay. Um, so, what if? Uh, so, in my thinking, okay, this is where I was thinking of going, but this was just an idea for discussion. Okay, when I'm looking at Dan, this was the chart, when we start talking about um, where we are in taxes, where we are with everything, where the tax, what's how it's going to affect us, how it's going to affect the taxpayers. When I looked at this chart, and I got 800 in, okay, so if we put the tax rate to the full amount, okay, the total increased levy is 898,000. Now, we already have 300 and let's see, 318,000, right? Off 318,000 that that is not in here that that was part of the original recommendations, right? So if we bring this back to um, just a little bit more like in, in uh, out of our and, and adjust the um, finance reserve, we could possibly bring it to to where the rate percent change would be three and a half percent. So increase the taxes and it would be in the middle to twelve point four two, which would raise five hundred and forty four thousand. I'm following. So that might say, okay, we are going up. It says three and a half percent, but we're not going to do the full amount right now. I, it's just a thought. It was up for discussion. If if we've already um, just did three hundred and eighteen. So if I if I just did my numbers right, three hundred and three hundred and eighteen right there, um, and I minus that off the, the 800, 898, minus 318, 70, that's 580. And according to this, the levy, yeah, that's 500, it would have 580, 544. So we would, Say we did um, maybe um, added 10,000 increase. The um, went from 75,000 to 85,000. So we still do it some uh, some of an increase because I don't believe we used it all. I mean we did use very little, but we plan on using a lot of it. Probably going to be for the trees. Um, but right now, as of right now, you know we've used very very little. I mean, do we need to bring it up? The, we haven't, you, we thought we would need, we thought, oh my goodness, we are going to need a lot. And we didn't end up needing as much as we thought. And I think next year is going to be better. We, you were very conservative with the revenues. I'm hoping that our, our uh, meals tax and on our room tax and things are going to start to do better. And, and we're going to get back and, and we're going to get the extra money coming in from, from the government. So I'm feeling like towards the end, it's going to be, we're going to be in better shape. But so I'm just saying maybe we don't need the full hundred. Maybe we could do, we did with 75 last time. Maybe we could do with 75 this time, or let's say just only do an increase of maybe just 10 and do 85 instead. Maybe we don't need the full 100. How does everyone feel about some of those numbers? I don't hate it. I think the logic makes sense. Yes. 85 sounds fine to me. All right, motion. I'll make a motion that we increase it by ten thousand dollars to eighty-five from the previous year, not not from hundred thousand. Right. Obviously, the math wouldn't work either. Uh, I second that. Anybody else have any discussion? Yes. Okay. But we're going home. Yeah. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
He's not voting. He's just got his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, should I still mark that vote down? I, I think so. Okay. I mean, because it's a change. It's the change from yeah. the yeah, yeah, yeah. everything yeah. else. So it, it was 5 0, though? Yeah. Yes, correct. So if okay. I if I have this right just in my thinking, we lowered the we put off to the fall the two hundred and seventy seven thousand for OPEP. We we lowered park and rec by approximately ten thousand because of the salary that adjustment that she did. We did the eleven thousand is up for question because of that is but it's a possible increase in revenue or it, it's a decrease if, if we can take it out of the, um, the um, for the van, for the uh, reserve. It's, a, it's up for discussion on the HR for the 20. And I think that's, is that it? Or was there, did we end up with another one? I think. The other ones that I proposed uh, were, were not recommended. Right. So I think the only other one would be fire if we wanted to look at increasing the revenues, but that is a, only a possibility. As a projection. As a projection. Am I? Am well, I, we could ask the chief. Yeah, but is that everything that, is that my oh. summary that you recall too? Is that right? I think. I'm missing. I did something wrong, I guess. I have to check my numbers again because I had you cut the uh, OPEB out and you cut 15,000 out of the. 15. 20 out of HR, Linda. Uh, that's right. The oh, I, I forgot that one. How much? Okay, plus 20,000. Yeah. 20,000. 20,000, 15, and 277,195. Why am I still off? Huh. 270? I am up with actually 312, 312. Okay. 185, 195. Okay. Okay. So I, I think I must have. I'm off by about 70,000 somewhere. So it was probably a typo. I'll go back and check. I have hard copy numbers for you, Linda, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <Don't check. laughs> okay. I just wonder if I transpose something. Maybe. Well, 70. It's, ex it's exactly 70,000. 20 out of there. That's a visible by nine, nine, Linda. <laughs> Okay, one more. One more. Wait, was that with, with the ambulance? Ambulance. Uh, ambulance. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for lowering the contract, though, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Victim of a, of a finger slip. All right. Does that come out right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the, the difference between the, the, the top figure is the... Ugh, sorry. Top figure is the bottom. Yeah, the top is the... Uh, okay. I did, this, I did the math and the other... It doesn't want to stay there. Sorry. That's okay. And um, yeah, the other is the, I added up the differences. So, so you cut, Amy, you, that's about what you said, right? 312? Yeah. 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 Okay. That sounds right. And then there's others for discussion, but that's where we are. And then that would bring us um, to uh, five, needing to um, have a levy increase of 580. 
which would bring us between the 350 and the four. It would be in, in between somewhere there. But so somewhere sorry, the back on the revenue. That's right in the middle. Right. Okay. So you're suggesting instead of the uh, us raising 901-653, you're going to, what's your new figure for, is that, okay. or don't you have it that way? What was no, the difference? Well, well, I just took what was on on Dan's sheet here, which was said uh, um, the total would be 898, but that's close enough to the 901. Okay. So I would just take the 312 off of the 901 the 312,000 okay. out of that. So you're about 590. Yeah. So that puts us in right in the middle, I think, that uh, it's not it's so not, three not going as far as we would go could go, but it's not, it is raising them. So okay. Okay. So I can take that then if and Figure that, calculate that into going back to your sheet. That would change your raise, raise an appropriate amount and to come back to be, uh, to be what we're funding here. So I can now fill in that fourth column for you, the, your uh, revenue column. Thank you. And um, and I won't wait on this. I'll get these figures together and hopefully get them out to you in the morning. I won't uh, just have them for the meeting. So that will come out because you're going to take it out of raise and appropriate. The budget will be reduced by the same amount. So you'll come out zero down here. And what you're suggesting is to, in order to fund, in order to fund, um, OPEB in the fall, for example, or maybe some other things that might be increasing, we're going to um, look to other revenue sources to increase and fill in the gap instead of taxes. So you're relying on maybe we'll get uh, ARPA revenue replacement funds for what we've lost in, in um, hotel. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, maybe we'll get, uh, maybe we can get our, maybe our fees will be back. Maybe we'll be charging more for fire inspection fees and things like that. So you're looking to other sources of revenue to come in and fill that gap. If we want, if we want to then put more money into the budget. Yes. Okay. Do you need a vote? Okay. So, and with the budget that Linda has typed all in, and let's have a, maybe there's a motion to accept the budget as seen on this page and we can present that to yeah. the um, select board. Okay. I'll make a motion. And, and subject to, there's a few questions in there, the waiver and, you know, some small things, but um, yes, with our recommendations, you need that spelled out in plain English. Make a motion to accept, uh, to recommend this budget as we've outlined it tonight uh, uh, to the uh, select board for their consideration. I'll, I'll second that motion. It's a good thing I went to public school. All right. Well, <laughs> you, you don't know have what? any other discussion. I. You know what you didn't do? Oh. Oh. Enterprise oh. funds. Oh. Oh, great. Hold that vote. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's just three. There's I just three. Uh, most of them, they weren't big things either. Either way, I looked at them. There were just regular. There were increases because of union. There's nothing we can do right. there. TV didn't really have anything. Their enterprise funds. I have no comments. I would put them as, as shown. All right. Anybody else? Any comments? No. Nope. I agree. Okay. <laughs> Oops. From, from the top, Paul? From the top. All right. <laughs> now that we have the, including the enterprise funds, I uh, <laughs> a recommendation that we accept, uh, that we submit to the, the budget as discussed tonight at 18,000, 18,020,818. Is that? You know, act, actually, Paul, Paul. Money out. 
the enterprise fund is a separate article and a separate budget. Oh, okay, so you cool. don't, this is, you see how, that's why, you know, we put it in, we used to do it all together. So that's why we put, I put informational roll, there now. Roll back. You're going to both on, on, uh, that's fine. Can the 2625. Okay. That's what you're voting on. Okay. Two million six two five. Your uh, cursor's on top, but I can't read it. Oh, sorry. All right. All right so that's what we're voting on. We are voting to uh, recommend. Well, that's on the enterprise funds, though, right? Yes. Okay. So we're voting to recommend on the enterprise funds a budget of two thousand uh, two million six hundred twenty five thousand four hundred thirteen for consideration by the select board. Okay. Do I have a second? I second it. All right. No more discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Well, we still have to vote on the other budget, the main budget, correct? Yep. Oh, I thought you did. No, we stopped. Oh, I stopped you. Yeah, that's why I said I was using the number down below. Thought it included everything, but that's okay. All right. So I'm making a motion that we vote to recommend a budget of $18,020,818, and no sense apparently, uh, to the select board uh, for their consideration for uh, fiscal year 2022, correct? Correct. All right. I'll second that. Okay, any more discussion? No? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. All right, great. Eight o'clock. We are all yeah. done. Okay, so I don't. All's favor motion. I'll, I'll make my favorite motion, but before I do, I just <laughs> want to say, Carolyn and Linda, thank you so much for your help. Susan, I know you're out there somewhere, and uh, Hadley Media, and Dan, and Dan, and uh, just thank you all for your help and support. And I know this is a very occasionally painful process, and especially for someone who has to drive all the way back to Wilbraham. I'm sure tonight. In no, the I'm home. Oh, you're home. home. That's right. You're oh, already good. there. Oh, I showed you the lake. That's right. You did. That's right. So you're already I'm going to go great. sit out and look at the lake right now. That's great. <laughs> and it's yeah. almost, it should be a full moon. Um, but anyway, I just want oh, to yeah. thank you guys. It's been, it, it's very helpful to have you here and you're very understanding. Uh, and I can understand how painful it is sometimes when you, when you've worked so hard on a budget that people pick away at it and, and ask questions, but you know, we're trying to do our best here and thank you for your help and advice and guidance. Thank you. And I'll make a motion on that to adjourn the meeting as soon as possible. <laughs> I second I it. Second, I second the sentiment and the motion. Yes. All in Thank favor. You. Aye. Good night, everybody. Aye. Anybody Good night. watching at home. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.